Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Monday. It's Daryl here. It's bright and freaking early, man. You know it. It's 3.30 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. This is not the video I planned on making this morning. I know I, I say that all the time. But this it's, it's always a spur of the moment. I, I have an idea of the, the, like, I get it down to about two different sub, there are two different topics that I want to talk about. And then I, I get everything done and I sit down and I'm going through the stories and all of a sudden I remember something. And I'm like, I want to talk about that instead. And I completely switch. And that's what's happening this morning. I want to talk about movies at the end of this. This is what I'm going to talk about. This is just, this is a heart to heart, me to you, what's on my mind this morning. I watched a movie yesterday and I think it's one of the best movies. In my personal opinion, one of the most, uh, it just, it sucked me in. It just sucked me in. It made me think I didn't see the end coming. Wow. I want to talk about that movie. Um, and also having to do with movies, something about Donald Trump and the movie Air. Uh, it's not about Donald Trump being indicted. Okay, so these are the two things. I'm going to talk about them. But there's something I noticed. I've been noting that I want to talk about this, and it's about my recovery and addiction, previous addiction and recovery. And I want to talk about this because it's be, be becoming more and more obvious to me pretty much every day. It's become, it's become something that I can't ignore anymore. I don't know if you ever heard this. I've been I've been hearing this since I was using back when I was probably in my twenties was the first time I heard this. I've heard people were I hear people say that once you start using like I did, uh, you know, when you become addicted, when you get involved in alcohol or drugs, your emotional growth is stunted right where you start your addiction, your emotional mental your emotional growth stops right there. And then once you get in recovery, you, you're kind of stunted. You know, and I, I've been hearing this for 20, 30 years, seriously, since I first started using, especially once I got into recovery. Uh, we'd, we'd have meetings every day. And I, I heard this a lot from the counselors, from the doctors, about my emotional growth being stunted, about, you know, I not taking on responsibilities, acting, still acting like I'm a teenager emotionally. And honestly, back then, I, I, poo I poo pooed it. I did. You know, I didn't want to believe it. I thought it was just kind of like uh, an, an analogy, uh, you know, I don't know, doctor talk. And I, I didn't want to believe it. And it's become more and more obvious to me. I've been clean. I, I know I tell you guys this all the time. I've been clean and sober since October 23rd of 2006. And. It's become more and more obvious to me every single day. If you look, I started using probably around 14, we'll say, we'll say between 14 to 18, the hard addiction probably hit me around 21. And I've been clean and sober for 16 years, 16 and a half years. So emotionally, if this is true, emotionally right now, I'd be somewhere around, let's see, say, let's say 18 plus 16, about 32, 33 years old, emotionally. And the things that have been going through my mind just this morning, just this morning, it's been happening constantly every day now. I feel I, I'm, I'm really, I've been thinking about having kids. Uh, I, I, let me start at the very beginning. Like I said, back when I, I first got into recovery, I poo-pooed this. You know, I was like, yeah, it's, it's you know, nonsense. I'm not, I'm not acting like an 18, a teenager right now. And I remember, I, you know, I remember having a hard time controlling my emotions. The people with me in recovery. Uh, acting, acting out like teenagers, but that was just the start of it. Once I got into recovery, I started rebuilding my finances. I got my own apartment. Um, and, you know, and it was almost like I was going through my 20s again. Looking back, I could see it now. I went back to school like I was starting, you know, like I was in, in sincerity, starting my college, my own apartment, uh, paying my bills on time. For the last 16 and a half years, that was one of the first things I started doing, catching up on all my bills, trying to get my credit back in order. That was one of the biggest mistakes I, I made, was, it was screwing my credit up. Um, but the things that have been, I've been going through my mind in the last 10 years really make me believe this. Uh, one of the biggest things, and this, this is a, a weight, a guilt that I'm going to carry with myself for a long time. It's got to do with Audrey. Uh, you know, we were, I told you guys know the story that, you know, we were, we were childhood sweethearts. It was the first 
it was my first girlfriend back in third grade. And we, we, we found each other again at, while we were both in recovery. We started living together. Uh, she passed away on August 5th, 2021 from COVID. But after we started living together, she told me right off the bat, you know, she wants to get married. She wanted to get married. She was looking for a husband. You know, this, was, this was around 2016 when I was about 50, 51 years old. And I, I said, yeah, sure, me too. And I just, I kind of agreed with her, you know. I, I was interested in dating her. This is when we first started dating. And then she moved in with me really quick. And I was kind of put off by that. I, I, I still, it was like I was acting like I was in my 20s. I, looking back, I could see it now. You know, even though I was over 50 years old, I wanted my space. You know, I wanted my own bachelor pad. And there, there came a point where we actually broke up. Because, you know, she, she was looking forward to a future at 50, like about 52, 53 years old. She wanted to get married. And I just told her I'm not that person. And I, I backed out. And that ended up with her getting her own apartment. And then eventually deciding to move to Jacksonville, Florida. And the whole time we stayed in contact, we still went to the beach together. We were still friends. We were soulmates. But I screwed it up by not taking on the responsibility. And now, now I wish to God, it's the biggest mistake I ever made, that I didn't say yes, that I didn't marry her. Now I could picture myself being married. It's, it's like I'm going through the years of like, say, 28 to 30. She ended up moving to Jacksonville. And within days of getting there, she caught COVID and now she passed away. And I, until my dying day, I'm going to blame myself that if I had married her, she would have never moved to Florida. She would have never caught COVID and she'd still be alive today. It's my fault. Uh, I carry this baggage with me every single day. And that's a whole other video. Uh, this is the thing. This, it, it, it gets even deeper. I've been considering investing my money. I've been thinking about investments. Gold, for instance. I've been looking into investing in gold. I've been getting my financial education, my financial thought has gotten a little deeper. But this, this is the biggest thing. The way I look at kids, I, every time, just this morning, they, were, they, had, they had something on TV about child care. And they had like a preschool, like little, little, these little three, four year old kids. And my heart, I look at children differently now. It's like I'm about 30 years old. Like I, 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 I could see myself having kids for the first time in my life. I, they're so freaking adorable. Like I could see myself being a father. This is the first time in my life I've ever felt like this. There's something, I don't know, maybe because I lost my dad. And I'm fearful that I couldn't raise a little boy because I didn't have a father. I don't know. But when I see a little girl, I just think they are the most adorable. My heart just melts. Like, oh my God, If I, I wish I could have a, a daughter, a little baby daughter that I could protect and, you know, and help and teach. You know, and for the first time in my life, I know it sounds crazy, but at 57 and a half years old, I, I'm actually, you know, it, it gets more obvious to me every day that my emotional growth, and I, I, I hate this, it sucks, you know, because I'm out of sync with everybody else. Um, but it's become more and more obvious. This is true. This is true. Um, the kid, the, the, the thing with children is just hit me like a hammer. You know, there first there was the marriage thing where I just, I told, I, I actually broke up with the woman I loved because I just didn't want to be forced into marriage. I didn't have the responsibility. And now I regret it. Now I could see myself being married. Almost like I went from the years like 25 years old to 30. I could see myself moving along the timeline that I should have been in. 25 to 30 years ago. You see what I'm saying here? And there's nothing I could do about it. I can't, I don't think I could rush it. It's just something that's coming naturally to me. I, I'm actually, I've actually started emotionally aging again. And I thought this was all crap, to be honest with you. And uh, the thing with the children lately, it is, this is just, it struck me like a hammer. You know, the, the way I see children. Like, I, you know, I could see myself being a father and this, I'm 50, I'm fi almost 58 years old, you know, and, <laughs> you know, it, it's real, uh, you know, so if you, if you're still using, you know, get into recovery, man, because you are not growing emotionally. And I, you know, I didn't believe it at first, but I, I do believe it now. All right, let's talk about movies really quick. I want to talk about this really quick. Donald Trump got in trouble for using a piece of film from the movie Air. 
with Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. This is a new movie. I have not seen it yet. It's about uh, Air Jordans. Michael Jordan, uh, biggest biggest uh, sneaker deal in history. This is the thing that surprised me. Now, don't get me wrong when I tell you guys this. I'm going to put the clip down below. And they show the, tr the, the clip that Donald, tr Donald Trump made. It's got this whole thing, this whole patriotic thing about a man rising up and how people build you up and then tear you down and the, you take that long walk at the end by yourself and, and, and it's, it's a, a monologue by Matt Damon in the movie Air and Donald Trump lifted it and he's, he's been informed he's in no uncertain terms to stop you, you know, cease and desist <coughs> from Matt Damon and Ben Affleck because they are no Trump fans. Um, here's the weird thing. You guys know you know, I just, I don't get it. I, I, I can't stand Donald Trump. I mean, this goes back 10, 20 years since he's first been in New York. I mean, he's just, he, I, I can see who he really is. And I, I, I don't get why people like, I, I think people are being manipulated. I can't how, understand how anyone in their right mind could idolize or, or like this guy. Here's the weird thing. I think the clip by Matt Damon from this movie is so good that as I was watching this piece that Donald Trump made, you know, with the stolen, the stolen monologue, and with the, 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 it's almost hypnotizing, and this is, I hate saying this, but I almost started feeling for Donald Trump. I almost started feeling like, you know, patriotism and, and, you know, MAGA, don't, 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 don't get on me here. You know, I, I credit this more to the piece, I, I want to see the movie air with Matt Damon because this this piece you know the way Matt Damon speaks this monologue I, th I believe it's a monologue this piece just grabbed me and then Donald Trump added this this imagery and I, I'll be honest to you at by the end I almost started feeling myself you know I have a lot of empathy I talk about empathy and I almost started feeling for Donald Trump like I almost started feeling like I could almost feel you know uh, you know, he worked so hard, and I was like, "Oh my God, I'm getting you know." I could I could start to feel the brainwashing going on, and I don't credit this to to Donald Trump. I credit this to Matt Damon, and it, just just listen to the monologue I'm talking about, or if if you dare watch the piece, I'm, I'm going to put the link down below to the exact piece I'm talking about. Don't worry, I'm not a Trump supporter, but I got to admit this: the way Trump's imagery. And combined with the monologue by Matt Damon, does grab you. It, uh, it it's almost I hate to say this. It's almost hypnotic. Don't worry. I I do. I am not a Trump fan, but wow, it's it's a strong it's a strong emotional response or almost hypnotic. Okay, last thing. I watched this movie last night, yesterday. A knock at the cabin door. Okay, it's interesting. The main two characters in this movie are from the are gay, are from the LGBTQ community. And I started reading the beginning. I, started, I read a little bit about it. I didn't want to spoil it. And uh, I, I read like uh, from a, uh, a commenter who is gay. And he said, this is a great LGBTQ themed movie. So I was like, wow, what, what could this be about? And I'm not going to give it away, but it's not what you think. Uh, this is, it's by M. Night Shyamalan, a knock, it stars Dave Bautista, big hulking guy from, uh, Guardians, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Wow, man, this is one of the best movies I've ever seen. I did not see, a typical M. Night Shyamalan, I did not see the end coming. Blew me away, man, blew me away. Fantastic, amazing movie, I think so. I think it's one of the best movies I've ever seen. I mean, I was glued to the screen the whole time, and I did not. I, I you know, I tried to, I can't give it away, but it's it's not what you think it is. It's not, you see these four guys, you know, Dave Batista, and they're all holding weapons, knocking the cabin door, two gay guys. It's not what you think. It's not, it, wow, blew me away. Four, five, if, Five thumbs up out of five thumbs up. All right, I see I'm running long, man. I got so I got two videos still waiting to download. I got a lot of material. Start watching these things, man, so I can download them. Have a good Monday.